2014 will have the bittersweet taste of winning a small battle in a losing culture war. The sad reality is that conservative fears over the voice, that is to say the reshaping of our society, the overhauling of our economy, the manipulation of our democracy and the rapid change to our way of life is already well underway. The right with uh, weak with poor leadership has been outgunned and outflanked. And basically the point is like, you know, what are our main complaints against the voice? Number one is that it's a, a, a reshaping of the culture of Australia. It's a, a victim. It's got, it's got a kind of anti-white racism as its pretext. Uh, a kind of rejection of the founding, the cultural uh, values of, of the founding stock and uh, of Australian history, um, that it's going to be the so-called invoice to parliament, that it's going to transfer wealth from uh, to Indigenous Australians or various programs through reparations and, and, and so on, um, that it's man a manipulation of democracy, that the voice will be able to somehow uh, subvert uh, the democratic processes. Uh, and that all this is going to lead to a kind of uh, reduction in the quality of life of the average Australian and a rapid kind of change to the culture of the country in general by, you know, saying the voice is going to be responsible for getting rid of Australia Day or changing the national anthem or changing the flag or whatever. Um, and so all of these fears around the voice, legitimate as they are, all of these fears are exemplified in what immigration is doing to our country. Immigration is destroying the culture of this country far more than the voice would immigration is negatively impacting the economy far more than the voice probably would i mean i don't know who knows depends on how much reparations they want but we're already being as we talk about on the show all the time white australia is already being massively impoverished by mass immigration whether it be through the what, what it's doing to the housing market how expensive it is uh, you know there was a report the other day that in sydney if you're an average you know, you earn an average income in Sydney. There's only two suburbs in all of Sydney that are median that that you could afford the average house uh, to get a, take out a mortgage and pay a mortgage to buy an average house in those in the two shittiest suburbs in Sydney. Every the third shittiest suburb in Sydney, an average income earner could not afford to get so a mortgage an individual to buy the worker, average house. An individual worker in future, as of right now won't be able to afford a house. They'll have to rent some cheap shit. They already can't. Apartment. They already can't. Yeah, they, they'll, they'll never be able to. That's, that's sad, man. It doesn't matter if you work your ass off and put in all the overtime you can, you're never going to be able to afford your own place in Sydney. That's just how things are now in Australia. Yeah, or Melbourne or in the future Brisbane. Um, you know, they want to bring in, they're talking about bringing in another 14 million immigrants in over the next, you know, 30 to 40 years. That's, basically adding uh, Sydney, Melbourne, Brisbane, and Perth again <laughs> of people to the country. So our four well, biggest really, cities really, doubling the, their populations. The primary concern I have there, and it might seem petty by somebody else's standards, how is the road infrastructure around the cities going to cope with a population increase that intense? Because it already can't cope with the current population. Has anyone driven to or from work lately it's an utter clusterfuck the roads in australia are awful they don't work like some of these suburbs weren't meant for the current population growth that they've experienced uh there's too many people there's too many cars on the road so you want to like double or triple the amount of people over the next like few years all from overseas like let's face it immigrants probably aren't going to be the most courteous drivers either a lot of them probably will just get you know, their licenses from overseas transferred over here and they won't have to apply for an Australian license because that could hinder their ability to replace you as an Australian worker. They want to replace you as quickly as possible, right? So they won't have to get their licenses. They'll just have their existing licenses transferred. And uh, it's going to be hell, man. The roads are going to be hell. They I already are hell. I mean, you live in are. Melbourne and whenever I've come down to Melbourne uh, recently, you know, trying to drive, it's a joke, man. Like, it's a it joke trying really to drive bad. across Melbourne. It's a, I like actually you get, think there's going to be like... To drive from one road side road. to the other is almost three hours drive, you yeah. know, certain times a day. I mean, Severe it's road rage incoming in the future. You're going to see people, like, punching on. You're going to see a couple of murders, I think. It's going to be that bad. People are going to be furious, especially because they're just trying to get to and from work within a reasonable amount of time, they're not going to be able to do it. They already can't do it, but if things get even worse, you're going to see extreme road rage. So Vic Pohl, I know someone from Vic Pohl is probably watching this. Yeah, make note. <laughs> yeah, so 
so yeah, also here, the manipulation of our democracy, we were just talking about how non-whites are voting completely opposite to how whites are voting. So the democratic will of this country, I mean, uh, and we've covered on the show many times, and this article talks about it as well, about how immigrants come in and they're solid votes for the left, um, particularly the Labour Party, they're getting double the amount of votes out of Indians that the than the Liberal Party, for example. Um, but, you know, we can see all the kind of uh, electorates, the key electorates in all the major cities are being demographically changed. And that's changing the characteristics of how of who can win those electorates. Um, and so that's fundamentally transforming our democracy. Not that I really care about liberal winning elections, but just from a kind of if you're a right winger, you know, and you're, you're a conservative and you're like, I don't care about race. I just care about preserving uh, the the values of, of Australia's founding. <laughs> And it's like, well, you have to care about race because if you bring in a bunch of immigrants who don't give a shit about preserving Australia's values and vote for the left, then you can kiss goodbye your conservative dream. You need oh, but, but if, if you want to make those, conservatism work, you need white people. But if those immigrants are wearing Australia T-shirts and Australia hats, then what does it matter? <laughs> and where do these people think values come from? Like values come from ideals, comes from culture, comes from race. Values are basically an extension of who you are right not just your ideas and beliefs but you know your intrinsic or uh how should i call it it's like your fundamentals genetic structure everything is downstream from there you change the race you change the culture you change the values that's why the yeah. more australia changes demographically the more it changes racially the more corrupt and messy and without any values at all it becomes because our race yeah. is changing. We're losing our race. We're losing our values. We're losing our culture. That's how it works, my friends. I really need <laughs> to 